George St. Pierre is the greatest MMA fighter of all time. And yes, we have had some amazing talent grace the sport over the years, but in my humble opinion, none of them have been better than GSP. Maybe I'm biased because he was my absolute hero while I was a young Canadian kid. But aside from being a ride or die fan, I think his skills and resume speaks for itself. And that was one reason why I wanted to remake this video. Yes, remake because the original one got blocked in some countries and demonetized recently. And this is something that has happened happened to many of my videos on my channel, but I gotta admit, this one hurt. Because aside from GSP being my hero, this video was the one that blew up and made my channel popular. So you can understand why he's such an important figure in my life. Although it was upsetting to have this happen to the video, it also gives me an opportunity to make a new and improved version. One where I don't look like this. One where there's an actual score on his career, cause back then I didn't give those. But this time I want to emphasize more on why I think he is the MMA GOAT. Even though it's been years since he last fought, I still think that he is better than any other fighter in the GO conversation. So in this video, we're going to take a look at George's MMA career to really understand how good he was. But first, shout out to the undisputed members of my Patreon. They get the extra perk of a shout out before each video. But even the intro members get early access and video to the Keon Kamara podcast. And as always, the money goes to charity. Once again, we donated to the Ronald McDonald House charity in Toronto. They provide homes for seriously ill children and their families during tough times. So so thank you to the Undisputed and Intro members for all your support. And if you'd like to donate, all the info will be down below. Now let's get to it. George began his MMA career on January 25th, 2002 at the age of 20. Prior to his debut, he trained primarily in Kyokushin Karate. At the age of 16, he began training in wrestling, jiu-jitsu, and boxing after his karate instructor died. He also held the record for most chin-ups done back in high school. He went to college for kinesiology, and in order to pay for tuition, he worked as a garbage man and also as a bouncer at a nightclub where he went by the name Fuzzy Broussard. In his first fight, George fought Ivan Menjivar. Despite the clear size difference, this was a competitive back and forth bout on the feet and on the ground. Although Ivan looked good early on, George was able to push Ivan down to the ground and this led to punches from above that forced the ref to step in. Even though the stoppage may be premature, it was a win and after this, George fought Justin Bruckman. George brought the fight down a couple of times and on the second takedown, he threw ground and pound before locking up an armbar that forced Justin to tap. This win also made him the UCC Canadian welterweight champion. In his first title defense, George fought Travis Galbraith. George brought the fight down and began to throw ground and pound, which included some brutal elbows that forced the ref to step in. Following this victory, he fought Thomas Denny. Once again, George put on a clinic both on the feet and on the ground, which eventually led to ground and pound that opened up a cut on Denny's face. This forced the ref to step in. Ten months later, George fought Pete Spratt. George secured a takedown and looked close to locking up a rare naked choke, and although Pete defended well and reversed him, George would end up reversing Pete which led to another rare naked choke attempt, but this time it forced a tap. After going 5-0, George signed with the UFC and made his debut at UFC 46 where he fought Carl Parisian. George looked good as he brought the fight down multiple times and did damage from above with ground and pound. Carl did have some moments where he looked close to locking up a submission, but George defended well and with him spending most of the fight on top, he ultimately won by unanimous decision. At UFC 48, he fought Jay Heron. George connected with some huge shots that dropped Jay a couple of times and on the final knockdown, George threw ground and pound which forced the ref to step in. This win gave him a shot at the vacant UFC welterweight championship. So at UFC 50, George fought former champion Matt Hughes. And this was a back and forth first round as both men had their moments on the feet and on the ground. But in the final 10 seconds, Matt attempted an armbar and with a second left in the round, George tapped handing him his first defeat. After this loss, George fought Dave Strasser, and George was back to his dominant ways as he brought the fight down and finished Dave with a Kimura. At UFC 52, George fought Jason Mayhem Miller. George controlled the action for the entire fight by securing takedowns, throwing ground and pound, and attempting submissions. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 54, George fought Frank Trigg. George outstruck and outwrestled Frank before finishing him with a rear naked choke. At UFC 56, George fought Sean Shirt. Sean's takedown got denied and this led to him getting picked apart on the feet before he got taken down and ate punches that forced the ref to step in. At UFC 58, George fought former UFC welterweight champion BJ Penn. This was a back and forth fight as both men had their moments on the feet, especially BJ who battered George's face, but George was able to bring the fight down a couple of times. Many people believed BJ did enough to win, but by the end, it was George who won by split decision. At UFC 65, George got another shot at the title. His 
His opponent was champion Matt Hughes, making it their second meeting. George was dominant this time around as he outstruck Matt and looked very close to finishing him at the end of round one. Although he wasn't able to get it done in the first, George got it done early in the second by dropping Matt with a head kick, which led to the fight ending ground and pound, making George the new UFC welterweight champion. His first title defense went down at UFC 69. His opponent was the Ultimate Fighter Season 4 winner, Matt Serra. Despite George being a huge favorite, he got rocked early on by punches and after going down for a final time, Matt threw ground and pound which forced the ref to step in. At UFC 74, George fought Josh Koscheck. George outstruck and outwrestled Josh for all three rounds to win by unanimous decision. At UFC 79, he fought for the UFC Interim Welterweight Championship. His opponent was Matt Hughes, making it their third meeting. George was able to bring Matt down and batter him with shots from above before locking up an armbar in round two that forced the verbal tap making George the UFC interim welterweight champion. So at UFC 83, he was set to unify the belt against the undisputed champion, Matt Serra, making it their second meeting. And George had home advantage as the fight took place in Montreal, making it the UFC's first event in Canada. And George had a successful homecoming as he outwrestled Matt for the entire fight, which led to ground and pound. Eventually, Matt curled up in round two, and this led to huge knees to his body, which forced the ref to step in, making George the UFC welterweight champion for a second time. At UFC 87, George fought John Fitch. This was an absolute clinic from George who connected with some nice shots on the feet and brought the fight down many times. By the end, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 94, the UFC lightweight champion, BJ Penn, challenged George for his welterweight belt, making this fight their second meeting. In contrast to their first matchup, this one was mostly George who was able to connect more on the feet and as the fight went on, he was able to bring the action down at will which led to shots from above. By the end of round 4, BJ's corner stopped the fight. But the aftermath of this fight had a lot of controversy as George was accused of greasing with Vaseline between rounds as BJ claimed that he was slippery. Regardless, the win remains as a win and George went on to fight at UFC 100 against Thiago Alves. George looked good as he connected on the feet and brought the fight down many times where he did more damage on the ground. After 5 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 111, George fought Dan Hardy. George outwrestled Dan for most of the fight and looked close to finishing him with some extremely tight submissions. Credit to Dan for surviving, but by the end, George won by unanimous decision. After this win, George became a coach on the 12th season of The Ultimate Fighter. The opposing coach was Josh Koscheck. Both of George's guys made it to the finals, and that dominance in the season made its way to their second fight at UFC 124 as George outstruck Josh for all five rounds. All he was doing was throwing jabs, but this was enough to break Josh's orbital bone, which caused his eye to swell up like a balloon. By the end, George won by unanimous decision. At UFC 129, in front of 55,000 plus people in Toronto, Ontario, George fought former Strikeforce middleweight champion, Jake Shields. And this was a lackluster fight as not much action really happened, but George did just enough both on the feet and on the ground to win by unanimous decision. Following this win, George was out for a year and a half due to a torn ACL. When he came back, he was set to fight the interim welterweight champion, Carlos Condit, at UFC 154. And despite the time off, George looked great as he outstruck Carlos on the feet, brought him down, and did damage on the ground with ground and pound. But in round 3, Carlos connected with a head kick that dropped George. The fight looked moments from being over, but George survived and continued to dominate. After 5 rounds, he won by unanimous decision. At UFC 158, George fought former Strike Force welterweight champion, Nick Diaz. George outwrestled Nick every round and even had the more significant moments on the feet. This performance earned him the unanimous decision win. At UFC 167, George fought Johnny Hendricks. This was a competitive fight as both men went back and forth on the feet and on the ground. There were moments where George looked to be in serious trouble as Johnny landed some bombs. Even though George survived till the end, his face was battered, but he too had his moments throughout this fight. Many believe Johnny did enough to become the new champion, but by the end, George won by split decision. After this win, George stated that he would be taking some time away from the sport. So a month after his win at UFC 167, he vacated his welterweight championship, and it really seemed like the end of an era because even though he left the door open to a return in the future, I personally would have been fine had he called it a career then and there because he truly had nothing else to prove. But after 4 years, he came back. And at UFC 217 at Madison Square Garden, George moved up to middleweight for the first time in his career to fight for the 185 pound championship. His opponent was champion Michael Bisping. Despite the long layoff, George looked good as he was landing the better shots early on and also brought the fight down a couple of times. But as time went on, Michael seemed to be the fresh 
lesser fighter, and with George's face being busted up by this point, the momentum of the fight was beginning to change. But then George connected with a left hand that dropped Michael, and after some ground and pound, he locked up a rear naked choke that put Michael to sleep making George the new UFC middleweight champion and the fourth fighter in UFC history to win belts in two divisions. But 34 days later, he vacated the belt as he was suffering from colitis and didn't want to hold up the division. And although there were many possible matchups for George after this, none of them came into fruition. So on February 21st, 2019, George announced his retirement from MMA. And then on May 9th, 2020, he was inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. So after going 26-2 in a career that saw him become a two-time UFC welterweight champion, the UFC interim welterweight champion, and the UFC middleweight champion, how good was George St. Pierre actually? Listen, I don't play the UFC games, but if I did, I would imagine that every single stat on George's character is maxed out. This guy was as close as you can get to the perfect MMA fighter, because he was a true mixed martial artist. His striking was so calculated as he would throw combos at ease without taking too much damage. That Superman punch of his was so effective, but even his jab in general was able to inflict a lot of damage. Plus, he was able to connect with some brutal kicks and knees. And even though he was known more as a volume striker, he still had moments where he was able to drop his opponents with one shot. He is one of the most technical strikers in MMA history, but he is also one of the most technical grapplers in MMA history as well. His wrestling was some of the best. And at the time of making this video, he holds the record for the most takedowns in UFC history at 90, which is very impressive to say for someone who never wrestled in college or who is not from Dagestan. It was difficult to defend a GSP takedown, but what was even harder was trying to get back up because George's top control was relentless. He was good Good at throwing ground and pound and his jiu-jitsu was top level, which has led to some impressive submissions and submission attempts. But as solid as his ground game was, it also garnered him a lot of criticism from people who believed that all he did was lay and pray on his opponents. And along with him going on a 7 fight decision streak at the end of his welterweight run, many people thought George was a boring fighter. Which I totally understand because when people think of dominant champions, they think of finishers. But I thought George was dominant in his own right. People may call his top control as safe, but I consider it to be smart. Was it mundane at times? Yes. But if it works, why fix it? And if there's anyone to blame, put it on his opponents who were unable to stop him. And even though he won many of his fights by decision, most of them were absolutely dominant as judges would give him 50 to 44s and 50 to 43s. In a way, staying that dominant for 25 minutes is more impressive to me than a quick finish. Especially for a fighter who is so susceptible to getting cut open on the face. And also one who wasn't known to have the strong his chin, but he made up for these things with his speed, strength, athleticism, and fight IQ. And it's funny because I talk a lot on this channel about grapplers who fall in love with striking, well George was a striker who fell in love with grappling. So as a fighter, George was superb and this led to an amazing resume in MMA. He has a record of 26-2 with both of his defeats being avenged in dominant fashion. And the level of competition that he faced was not only against some of the best, but was also in an era where there was no USADA around. George fought through three different eras in the welterweight division. Even when new, hungry, and up-and-coming fighters seemed to have the momentum to dethrone him, he didn't let it happen. It's even more difficult to stay motivated enough to defend the belt for as long as he did. Especially with all the lows that he had to go through, but even when he went through a serious ACL injury, he came back and was still a force to be reckoned with. When he lost his fights, it did not deter him from coming back. He never mentally broke because he knew how to handle the adversity that was thrown his way. And that's why if there was anyone who was to take off four years and come back and win another belt in a heavier weight class, it was going to be George. And this mental strength carried on outside of the cage as he maintained a clean and positive image throughout his entire career. He was respectful and very kind, which was such a contrast to what he did in the cage. Plus, I have to give him credit for making suits a thing in MMA. Keep in mind, this was a time where every fighter would just wear tap out gear, but George showed up in his best attire and it really gave the sport a cleaner image. In fact, George as a whole made the sport of MMA into a more respectable one because he was the first fighter to approach it as an athlete. He trained and carried himself as one and now we have many fighters today who do the same. And besides Grease Gate, he never really had any major controversies. The only thing I wish we did get to see was a super fight between him and Anderson Silva back in their primes. Many believe George should have taken that fight, but instead, he stayed at welterweight, which may have been the proper decision as he continued to build his legacy at 170. Plus, we've seen time and time again how great fighters can lose fights once they move up to a heavier weight class. And even though George beat Bisping, it was still a tough fight for him. 
Regardless, he had a legendary career. He became very popular not only in Canada, but also around the world. And this led to him being one of the highest pay-per-view earners back in the day, which was very impressive at a time when the sport was still growing. He never had to put on a gimmick in order to sell tickets. He was authentically himself and that was respected by many. He is so likable and overall, he gave very little reason to not root for him. For all these reasons, that's why I believe George St. Pierre is the greatest MMA fighter of all time. Some other names in the MMA GOAT conversation include John Jones, Fyodor Emelianenko, Anderson Silva, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and most recently, Kamaru Usman, who many people believe is close to surpassing George's legacy at 170. But as great as these fighters are, I still can't consider any of them to be the greatest. When it comes to skill and maybe resume, I would say John is better than George. But with all the controversies that have occurred throughout his career, which includes failed drug tests, I simply can't put him at the top. And then we have Fyodor, who was dominant for years in a division where one shot can change anything. But similar to Anderson Silva, he overstayed his time in the sport and that resulted in his downfall. And then we have Khabib, who retired undefeated with a 29-0 record and had never even received a scratch in a fight. Not even George has reached this level of perfection in his overall career. But in my opinion, the level of competition that Khabib faced was not at the same level. Don't get me wrong, he fought a lot of great fighters, but just like how I wish GSP fought Silva, I wish Khabib fought Tony Ferguson in his prime. I think Khabib winning that Tony fight would have been huge for his career and would have made me consider him more as the GOAT of MMA. I believe dominant champs have to win big fights, and even though Khabib has done this before, it's not as many compared to George. And the main reason why was because he was not as active as George. Khabib only fought once a year as champion, while George usually fought twice a year. So of course, this led to more title defenses for George. And with this competition being more frequent and more difficult, I have to put George over Khabib. Now what about Kamaru Usman? His career is not done yet, but he is already at a point where many believe that he is going to surpass George at 170. In fact, some believe that he has already surpassed him. And don't get me wrong, Kamaru is an absolute beast. But my issue with his run as champion is how he dealt with Kobe Covington, who he didn't fight for years after their first fight, even though the rematch was the matchup everyone wanted. But instead, he fought Gilbert Burns, Jorge Mar Masvidal and even teased the fight with Michael Chiesa before finally fighting Kobe for a second time. But by this time, the momentum of the fight dwindled down compared to had it happened immediately after. George on the other hand never did this. If the fans wanted him to fight a certain fighter next, he would do it without any question at 170. In fact, he even fought Nick Diaz who was coming off a controversial loss because everyone was still interested in that matchup. And by doing this, George fought all of his opponents while they were still at their absolute peak. Not only skill-wise, but also in terms of momentum. He never handpicked fights or waited for matchups to dwindle down in momentum. And for those who argue that it took longer for Khabib and Kamaru to finally get a shot at the title, I just don't find that as a good reason. Just because fighters like George, Conor McGregor, and Israel Adesanya had quick runs to the title, it doesn't mean things were easier for them compared to someone who fought more fights before they finally got a shot at the belt. Because George went up against some of the biggest names right away on the biggest stage. Many fighters have failed because they got pushed too quickly, but George flourished. And as great as these fighters in the GOAT conversation are, GSP rises above them all as he set a standard unlike any other. That's why I think he's the GOAT and that's why I would give his MMA career a 10 out of 10. He wasn't known for trash talking, but honestly, he had some of the best one-liners in MMA history. And as important as he was to the sport of MMA, he was even more important to his home country of Canada. He was a hero here as he represented all of us Canadians so well. And because of this, the sport became so popular in Canada. So as a young Canadian kid who went on to make MMA videos, I want to say thank you to George St. Pierre. My name is Keon and this is my take on George Rush St. Pierre. Do you agree, disagree, or have something else to add? Please put in the comments down below because I love to read it. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. But that's all for now, so I'll see you in my next one.